All right, today I want to talk to you about a minor with a fake ID and what the actual charges are, depending on the crime created, committed with the minor too. Now, if it's murder, it's a felony. It's a felony. Or attempted murder, it's a felony. It's a felony. We already know that, right? Beast. I still don't know your name there. You still don't know my name. So, I'm looking up fake IDs now. Mm -hmm. Here's what really happens when you're busted for a fake ID, right? We asked the cop what really happens when you're busted for a fake ID. Can you go to jail? Police officers and lawyers revealed the truth. Right? Borrowing your older sibling's driver's license, buying a fake at a sketchy online site, photoshopping a copy of your passport, college underclassmen, do all these things to get their booze on. <laughs> and very few think twice about the legal risks they carry in their wallets. Getting turned away from a bar isn't the worst fate you could suffer if a suspicious bouncer asks you what your zip code is. Right. We spoke to police officers and criminal defense attorneys who deal with fake IDs ID cases to find out what exactly happens goes down when you get caught red-handed you lying about your age. Here's what they said. Bouncers may confiscate your ID and hand it off to the police. Right? Yes, really. Our previous interviews with bouncers and liquor store employees suggest this isn't a common thing, but it definitely happens. Sometimes we'll have police waiting outside the bar undercover. Criminal defense attorney Brandon Davis told us the bouncer will just hand them IDs that are suspected fraudulent and they'll take people into custody right there. And while exaggerating your age to a bartender may seem like no big deal, Every underclassman does it, right? Lied to the cops is a big no-no. <laughs> Handing the police officer your fake ID and trying to pass it off as the real deal will never work out in your favor. Right? Any cop, you can't tell my age, right? That's your problem, that's your problem. As long as I get my ID properly, right, which I always do, right? I'm not lying, you are. I can still represent myself as Shane because I'm current, right? I'm not dying, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. Doesn't like being lied to. Reserve police officers and MTV news writer Craig Goldstein explains. If you give a cop a fake ID, whether you get pulled over or caught at a liquor store, and they say, is this yours, and you keep lying, they're going to jam you up even more so, right? People really do get arrested for fake IDs, right? Fleeing F-O-M-O, feeling F-O-M-O, because you can't join your friends at a bar, isn't the worst thing that could happen if a bouncer spots your fake, but arrests don't happen all the time, of course. So we asked Sergeant Adrian Acevedo, a police officer in New Jersey, just how frequently they occur. It usually happens during the first few months of the colleges coming back from their break at the beginning of their school year. He told us, you get arrested, happening quite often, could be once a week, if you are arrested, you most likely, you will most likely be charged with a misdemeanor. All right. The exact charges vary by state, but in New York, 
The most common one is criminal possession of a forged instrument in the third degree, which is a misdemeanor that could result in up to one year in county jail. Lawyers can sometimes negotiate an initial charge to get you a lesser severe violation, but this is never guaranteed, right? Fake IDs are basically always going to be charged as a misdemeanor in California, but still the attorney may be able to get it reduced to an infraction. Criminal defense attorney Daniel Perlman said, buying a fake ID is a felony in some states. In some states, Florida and Illinois, for example, you can be charged with a full felony for showing a fake ID. I know. Police will actually arrest you for a felony, as ridiculous as that sounds. Criminal defense attorney Kate Mezik, Mezik, or whatever, told us she handled fake IDs cases from both the prosecution and defense side. Most people don't realize that it's actually a felony in Florida. Most of the kids think it's no big deal, right? Don't freak out, though. Before you're charged, cops usually take into consideration what you were using the fake ID for. In Illinois, it can be a Class 4 felony for possession of a fraudulent ID. Davis explained, however, this is very rare. For a kid getting into a bar, police usually don't take that aggressive of an action, but they can. I don't know. Keep in mind that being charged with something serious, a misdemeanor, a felony, isn't the same thing as being convicted of said crime. Without any prior issues, conviction would be very unlikely, Davis said. You probably won't go to jail if it's a first-time offender, right? Depending on the crime. You see, see what I'm saying there? If you're involved in an attempted murder, right? and you have a fake ID, you're just as guilty as the murderer themselves. And if they keep attempting to murder me with a fake ID, it becomes your sin or your crime and that's a felony. Murder is always a felony. You can never change that. If you are in caught with a fake ID and someone's trying to murder the person you have the fake ID with, and, uh, and they give it to you and you take it and you do what they tell you to do, it's sure in the person's crime, not mine, not mine. And if you use the fake ID to have sex with someone, that's you knowing you're underage, still a felony for you, not me, not him. Because all I can do is ask you for your ID. If it's a fake ID, only you know that, and the guy who gave it to you. Well, that's your criminal offense. You know at a certain age your behavior can be good or bad. Even a child can be charged with attempted murder if the person is murdered too, right? Or attempted to be murdered, right? Misdemeanors convictions can land you in jail for up to a year, while felonies can lead to several years of incarceration. But again, the circumstances surrounding the fake ID use definitely factors into sentencing decisions. Use a fake ID to get into a bar is a very different from using it to impersonate someone else for financial gain. When a fake ID is used for the sole purpose of obtaining tobacco or booze, we understand that you're doing it because you want to not doing it because you want to commit some bigger crime, right? It's a video told us usually first time of fence People don't get jail time, but you can be put on probation or lose your driver's license for up to two years in New Jersey. That's right, you can lose your real driver's license for a year or more, right? That's what the fake one, that's what the fake one. License suspension occurs in many states even if you aren't actually arrested. In Illinois, for example, even though fake IDs can technically be charged as a felony, that's not what usually happens. Davis reveals that most of the time the police will confiscate your fake, write it, write up a report and send that report to the Secretary of State, 
who controls the DMV, right? Your real driver's license is then suspended for one year. Fines or community service may also be required depending on whether or not <laughs> the cops cite additional charges on top of their initial report, right? <coughs> the driver's license suspension often applies in non fake ID situations as well. I don't know. Open container violations or just being a minor in possession of alcohol can leave you begging your friends for rides. And, uh, and the consequences of getting way worse if you are a repeat offender, right? Or you're, I don't know. The second offense in Illinois will result in a license revocation. Davis explains. It's in indefinite period without driver's driving privilege. You have to go through a hearing with the Secretary of State, which would also require an alcohol and drug evaluation. Creating a fake ID is way worse than just using one, right? Don't matter who creates it for you either. Fake IDs typically set you back around $100 depending on the quality of the and quantity ordered at the time. Right now. You might be tempted to create your own ID instead of forking over your hard earned cash to a, a rando who says they know a guy, right? Save your Photoshop skills for your Facebook profile pic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make your own fake or make one for your friends, you'll be charged with forgery, which is a more, much more serious offense than possession of a forged instrument. In California, that's a felony charge for forgery of a State Department or document. Right. Sorry. Perlman explained why it is unlikely that can result in a prison sentence. A future employer would see that charge as one invoking honesty. Right. Similarly, fake passports carry harsher consequences than fake licenses. Right. We mentioned the previous we mentioned this previously, sorry. Sometimes my I think it's a little blurry. <laughs> but it clears up. But it's it's worth repeating here. Passports are federal documents while driver's licenses are issued by individual states. If you're busted with a fake license, the legal consequences are confined to whatever state you get caught in. Even if it isn't your home state, but if you use a fake passport, you can be prosecuted at the federal level. Right. Federal prosecutors are worse because... <clears throat> Federal prosecutors generally have more attorneys and money to devote to each case. Your chances of winning in a, a trial against a federal prosecution prosecutor tends prosecution, I'm sorry, tend to be lower than in state court. Criminal defense attorney Lance Fletcher told us Something will likely end up on your record, at least temporarily, right? Even if you aren't arrested or charged with anything, driver's license suspensions goes on your private public record for the duration of the suspension. Afterwards, you can pay to have it taken off, right? Something's going to go on your record for some period of time, Davis said. Several states have clauses within their legislation that allow fake ID cases to be dismissed without any major penalties if the fake was used for the sole purpose of obtaining alcohol or for entry into an age-restricted <clears throat> venue. In these situations, the defendant that you that's you, the kid who was busted, has to meet the court's conditions 
which typically involve alcohol education classes and common community service before the charges are dropped. Lawyers can help negotiate these specific terms, but again, nothing is guaranteed. If somebody is arrested, even if the charges are dropped, it will still show up on their record in Florida, Messick told us. Sometimes records can be expunged. Sometimes they can't be, all right? It all depends on the circumstances and many times. Whether or not it's granted is completely discretionary, which could negatively impact your ability to get a job. If you aren't convicted, the first-time offenders usually aren't. You can answer no to an applicant's question. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Right. This doesn't mean your past is completely buried, however. And, uh, if your license was suspended several years ago and you took never took action mm -hmm. to remove the suspension from your public record, an employer could find out, and if you are convicted, that charge will likely go on your permanent record and follow you around the, for the rest of your life. Any theft, forgery, or fraud charges on someone's record is going to significantly compromise <clears throat> their ability to find employment. Yes, it's getting fiery. And, uh, dry. <clears throat> know what I mean? My throat. Let me clip my throat! No. Uh, barring <laughs> your older friend's real ID can get you both in trouble. In the same vein, lending your ID to underage friends once you're over 21 can also land you in hot water. The specific legal percussions Again, vary by state. Messick explained to us that in Florida, specifically, both of you could be charged with second degree misdemeanors. Whether you give it back or not, I don't care. It's just fucking mashed potatoes. Get over it. Get over it. If you need it that bad, you can have them. <laughs> and the rice are only and the rice are only. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> The legal process is a total nightmare, right? That just remembers, that means I remember buying it, even if you keep missing me night after night, right? Or during the day, right? I resurrect quickly, right? As soon as the person trying to shoot me leaves, whether I fall down or not, <clears throat> I'll be healed and resurrected, and the bullet might just evaporate in my body. I don't know, I don't know. Which the Wolverine can't do that either, I don't know. <laughs> And sort of become part of my body. I don't know. I don't know what Carl's doing, but he's doing something. He's doing something if you're doing a crazy shit like that to me. I know. All right. If you're arrested, the police will fingerprint you, take your mugshot, all that fun stuff you see go down on Law and Order, regardless of what you are or aren't charged with. You will likely need a lawyer's help. To make negotiations and sort out court appearances, which occur over the course of several months. Generally, a misdemeanor case in New York may see three to five court dates before it is resolved. Fletcher told us. Simple cases can be resolved with as little as one or two court dates. Complex misdemeanors can last up to 10 court dates or longer. We won't even go into the massive fees all those legal meetings and sessions would amount to. Even if you aren't busted, just getting a fake comes with a significant risk. If you don't have an older friend or sibling whom you can smooch, smooch 
a real idea off of. The process of finding or buying a fate is sketchy at best. Online manufacturers ask you for personal information and giving out your real name, address, state, or a birth or social security number to a stranger across the world means someone can steal your identity. IRL. Uh, hmm. hmm. I'm almost done. If you give out your personal identifying information, the person receiving it could use it in a way that you did not authorize, or they could give it to a third party to make the ID. Fletcher told us this third party could then save it and use it for other customers. Right? Using someone else's name on your fate isn't a solution, though, because that comes with just as big of a problem. If you're using a fake ID with someone else's name, that might be a warrant or something attached to that name. That now, that's that now you're going to take ownership of is a few to explain. For example, if the name on your fake ID has a warrant for murder, you're going to get brought in and be put in jail until they figure out it's not you. Murder is an extreme case, but it happens all the time. <laughs> Especially when people are making multiple IDs with the same name, right? Like Mary, for example, right? Moral of the story, fakes aren't as casual as your friends and even the media play them off to be, right? They come with big risks and even bigger legal consequences if you're caught. Now, your state-specific laws governing the use of fake IDs, you might need that into somebody in so someday, though we hope you don't. Alright? Now, if you commit murder, right, for example, during a felony, right, or someone tries to murder someone, right, whether they resurrect it or not, that's still attempted murder, right? Now, if someone's resurrected, I don't know what the law will do because most people don't know about that or can't do that, right? That's the truth. That's the truth. But if you can do that and you can resurrect and heal, well, no one can say how long you were dead or stuff like that, right? Even if they shoot you and they run around and you don't fall down before they see you or you see them, right? Vice versa. That's still attempted murder of the person you're trying to kill. Now, if the person resurrects and heals like the Wolverine, he won't even know what you did, right? But you'll know, and then if there's surveillance, like cameras or shit like that, the cops will know, right? Did you try to kill someone and he resurrected and healed like the Wolverine and somehow the bullets even became part of his body, right? I don't know, I don't know. But if that were to happen, something like that could occur, right? If you are a true believer in Jesus, right? If you're not, fine, I don't know what will happen to you. But otherwise, right, if you believe in Jesus as the scriptures say, you'll never die, you'll never die. That's up to you, right? We don't force you. We don't force you. We don't force convert, but again, uh, they should convert, convert the person or people doing it to me, too, right? They should realize by now they can't kill me outside of Jerusalem, right? And they're just making me freaking immortal, right? Stronger than the Wolverine, too, right? <laughs> you can't break a triangle at the apex of the triangle, right? Which is the top, which is the top, <laughs> by the way. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.